Hello, in this video we're going to talk about Community Acquired Pneumonia, or CAP for short. This is an overview and introduction. So Community Acquired Pneumonia is pneumonia acquired outside hospital in a person who is not immunocompromised. The choice of antibiotics is usually empirical because the etiology or the cause of the pneumonia is not known for at least 48 hours after admission. And severity of the pneumonia is considered using the CORB or CURB or the smart cop, And this is used to determine severity. So in summary, what to do with community acquired pneumonia? It's important to assess, uh, stabilize the patient, take a history, examination, chest x-ray, and remember to take oxygen saturation. The clinical presentation of pneumonia uh, include chest pain, dyspnea, a wet cough or a dry cough, fever and headache. Looking at a lung with pneumonia, it can present as either infection inflammation affecting a lobe of the lung, this is known as lobar pneumonia, or the inflammation infection can affect patches throughout the lungs within the airway itself, and this is known as bronchopneumonia. These findings might not be visible on the chest x-ray, and, and it's important to know this. So let's look at the functional units of the lungs, which are the alveoli. Normally alveoli are clear, they allow for exchange of oxygen with carbon dioxide. In lobar pneumonia, these alveoli are filled with fluid made up of bacteria, pus, blood, or fluid. And this fluid substance is called uh, within the alveoli is called consolidation and it's due to infection the inflammatory process that occurs within the lungs in pneumonia we get consolidation of the lung parenchyma in bronchopneumonia similar things are happening except the site of consolidation is really mainly along the airways the bronchioles and this can later move towards the alveoli eventually leading to lobar pneumonia there are many causes of pneumonia. They can be viral causes, bacterial, parasitic, or fungal. We will talk more about the etiology or the causes of pneumonia later on in this video. Now, not everyone develops pneumonia. Some people are more susceptible than others. Risk factors for developing pneumonia include smoking, recent antibiotic use, age greater than 60, 60 a recent respiratory tract infection, having an existing res um, respiratory lung disease, being immunocompromised, and um, having traveled recently. The next question is to ask is how do these microbes actually cause the infection, the pneumonia? Let us see what forms of barrier we have in our respiratory system that prevents these infections from occurring. So normal pulmonary defenses, normal lung respiratory tract defenses include the nostrils, the cough reflex, commensal microorganisms that fight for the area, the mucociliary apparatus that sweeps bad things out of, out of the respiratory tract. Deep in the lung tissue, we have residing alveolar macrophages that clean up the area. We cannot forget our innate immune system, including, you know, the an antibodies that are present, the dendritic cells and the mast cells, all which are important in defending our respiratory tract. The pathogenesis of pneumonia occurs when there are personal risk factors, environmental risk factors, or the microbes, the causative agents themselves, have virulent factors which enable them to cause an infection, to cause pneumonia and cause consolidation. The microbes, the causative agents, have a few modes of entry into the lungs. The causative agents can be inhaled, which is the most common route of entry. The microbes can be aspirated from the upper respiratory tract. This is called microaspiration. Or the microbes can enter from the GIT, and this is known as macroaspiration. Microbes can enter the lungs via hemat hematogenous spread, direct inoculation, or there can be activation of dormant infections, such as in TB. In summary, the microbes have multiple routes of entry into the lungs, and together with its 
virulent factors and the person's personal factors and environmental risk factors, the microbe can cause an infection in the lung and this will lead to pneumonia. On examination, a patient with pneumonia can be tachycardic, have a high fever, sweating, disorientated. They have decreased lung expansion on the infected side. They can have reduced air entry and bronchial breath sounds. It, it's dullness on percussion on the affected lobe and also increased vocal resonance. After taking the history and examination, there is, there is an important step, which is to assess the severity of the pneumonia or to assess the severity of how sick the person is. And there are a few methods out there that can be used, including CURB-65 or CORB-65 in Australia, or SmartCOP. Let's look at CURB-65 or CORB-65. So C, it stands for confusion. U, you're looking at urea. Urea greater than seven uh, millimoles per liter is dangerous. Or for oxygen, SAT less than 92 is dangerous. R is for respirate greater than 30. B is for blood pressure, less than 90 systole or less than 60 diastole. And 65 is the number of years or age. So each one of these things gives you one point. And depending on how many points the person has can help you predict the severity. So zero, a patient who scores zero can likely go home with some oral antibiotics, for example. If a patient scores one to two, you consider hospitalization. And if a patient scores greater than three, they require urgent hospitalization. Remember that this is only meant to help assist with assessing severity and should not be used as gold standard. Clinical judgment is important and necessary. We talked about the causative agents of community acquired pneumonia being bacteria, viral, parasitic, fungal. Now let's talk more about these causative agents, but focus on bacteria and viruses specifically because they are the main causes of community acquired pneumonia. In order to look at the causative agents of community acquired pneumonia, we can divide them into infections in the neonate, children, adults, and the elderly. In neonates, the common agents include streptococcus pneumonia, respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Group B streptococcus and listeria are also common causes of neonatal pneumonia. And these most likely are acquired from the mother after delivery. For children, viral causes are the most common, including respiratory syncytial virus and influenza. Common bacterial causes include streptococcus pneumonia and also the atypical mycoplasma pneumonia. Interesting side point, regular penicillin will not work against mycoplasma. Tell me why. For adults, the, core, the main causative agents include streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, Moraxella caralis, mycoplasma pneumonia, in the elderly, streptococcus pneumonia again, and there's also Legionella species, which are common. Another important point to make is that there is an increased rate of infection caused by Staphylococcus aureus, as well as the burdensome uh, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA. And these are a common problematic causes of pneumonia um, acquired from the hospital. So in summary, we just looked at the common causes of pneumonia depending on the age groups. Let us now look at the common causes of community-acquired pneumonia uh, depending on the severity. So, mild, moderate, severe. Streptococcus pneumonia can cause mild, moderate to severe pneumonia depending. Mycoplasma pneumonia can cause mainly mild or moderate community-acquired pneumonia. Haemophilus influenza, similarly, mild or moderate. Chlamydophilia pneumonia, similarly, mild or moderate. 
Respiratory viruses, including RSV and influenza, usually cause mild to moderate community-acquired pneumonia. Other causes of severe pneumonia, pneumonia include enteric gram-negative bacteria, usually from aspiration, and enteric meaning from the GIT. There's also other common causes of severe pneumonia include Staphylococcus aureus and Legionella species. Investigations for community-acquired pneumonia include chest x-ray, which may reveal consolidation in one of the lobes or bronchopneumonia or nothing at all in the chest x-ray. Mycoplasma pneumonia often show bihyla consolidation. Performing an ABG is important to check for metabolic acidosis, as acidosis is associated with severe pneumonia. Serology tests include your standard FBC for blood count, liver function tests, and electrolyte urea creatinine. Blood cultures and sputum cultures and sensitivity is use useful to check for the type of bacteria and what antibiotic they are susceptible to. Microbial investigation. Interesting point. The microbial cause of community-acquired pneumonia is not found in majority of cases. Other investigations that can be performed can be performed to, for specific microbes, to identify specific microbes. So for pneumococcal pneumonia, urinary antigen testing can be done. Similarly for Legionnaire's disease, urinary antigen for serotype A can be performed. For viruses, immunofluorescent tests can be performed through swabs of the throat and the upper respiratory tract. Mycoplasma pneumonia, you can use complement fixation tests as well as direct diagnostic techniques. The management of community acquired pneumonia include oxygen, fluids, IV, analgesics such as paracetamol or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain. Antibiotic therapy is empirical for diagnosis of community-acquired pneumonia. In general, IV antibiotics is used for moderate to severe community-acquired pneumonia. Finally, when patients can tolerate, switch to oral antibiotics. Oral antibiotics is usually uh, given straight away for mild community-acquired pneumonia. Talking a bit more about antibiotics, in general, for community-acquired pneumonia, two antibiotic types are given empirically. This is to target two different groups of bacteria, which are unknown. Um, Beta-lactams is to target the gram-positives, and the macrolides or aminoglycosides are to target gram-negatives, as well as gram-positives. There's also metronidazole, which can be given specifically to target anaerobic organisms if, if you suspect aspirational pneumonia. After treatment or discharge, it is important to follow up at six weeks with a chest x-ray to the family doctor. It is also recommended, especially in the elderly, to get annual vaccination to prevent any further pneumonia. Now finally, let's get all that we've learned and put it all into an algorithm, into a pathway. So first, you have clinical history examination, which is suggestive of pneumonia. First thing to do is order a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray can show no consolidation or consolidation. If no consolidation, consider other diagnosis, plus minus pneumonia still. If the chest x-ray showed consolidation, pneumonia is most likely. Assess the severity using the CORB65 or CURB65 or SMARTCOP. Now, depending on the severity, the patients can then either be treated as an outpatient or as an inpatient. The investigation is done on a mild, uh, on a patient who has mild severity, include just bloods, such as full blood count. If all point to mild community acquired pneumonia, just treat with amoxicillin oral and or doxycycline. For patients who require hospitalization, it is important to perform other investigations such as 
blood cultures, sputum cultures, and possibly other specific microbiological tests. And then it's important to assess the severity again, um, and the patient will be either moderate or severe. For moderate CAP, community acquired pneumonia, treat with benzyl penicillin IV, plus either doxycycline oral or roxithromycin oral. For severe community acquired pneumonia, treat with IV antibiotics all the way. IV antibiotics include benzyl penicillin IV, plus gentamicin IV or keftriaxone IV, plus azithromycin. Again, remember to follow up with a chest x-ray at six weeks to see if lungs are clear. Now, please know that this pathway I just showed, it comes from the Australian guidelines from 2016, and this is most likely going to change, and it's most likely different in your country, so just beware. Thank you.